everything. I moved to MP Uptown because as a black business owner, I want to be in North Minneapolis and help provide jobs. At MP Uptown, we pay above living wages, hire people who have made mistakes in the past, and believe in social justice. We have over 175 Google reviews with a five-star rating. Let us handle your next print project because when you support our business, you support the community. Call 612-870-0777 or visit mpuptown.com. That's mpuptown.com. We print everything. Experiencing an injury or illness? Wondering if you'll be able to keep your job or when you can return to work? The Minnesota Retain Program may be able to help. Participants may qualify for free support from experts who can guide you through the next steps to get you back to work quickly and safely. Visit mnretain.com or call 507-284-4537 to learn more. Minnesota Retain is fully funded under a grant awarded by the U.S. Department of Labor and the Social Security Administration. This message is brought to you by Minnesota Retain, this station, and the Minnesota Broadcasters Association. With a look at your AM 950 weather, I'm Patrick Lilia. Tonight will be clear with a low of 39, then warm sunshine Saturday with a high of 78. The sexy liberal comedy tour hits the Pantages Theater in Minneapolis tomorrow night. Limited tickets remain both for the show as well as tickets at the door for the pre-party at On the Rocks in Minneapolis. Get your tickets for the show at am950radio.com. Portions of the following program may be pre recorded. The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host, guest, random reptoid, or chupacabra may not necessarily reflect those of AM 950 Radio, its affiliates, or its sponsors. Now it's time to step into the unknown. There are things people experience but never talk about. A shadow moving in the corner, flickering of the lights, a disembodied voice. We invite you to talk with us, share your story, share your experience, because this isn't just your story. This is our story. This is Ghost Box Radio with Greg Bakken. And this is Ghost Box Radio on AM 950, where every night we talk about the paranormal, ufology, Bigfoot, and so much more. Happy Friday, everybody. I am coming to you live from Baxter, Minnesota. We're not too far from Brainerd. Meanwhile, as always, and always kind of the, the backbone of the situation over here, we have Mr. Adam and Eden Prairie. How are you tonight? Doing well tonight, sir. How, if you're going to be up in Brainerd, it's going to be 80 here in the Twin Cities tomorrow. I hope you packed shorts. Oh, wait, you always wear shorts. Wearing so you're going to be fine. The the only downfall, of course, is that I I only have hoodies. Uh, so and and when I when I got in into because I'm up here for an event this weekend that uh, is really exciting about. It's uh, the Psychic Paranormal Wellness Fair. Soul and Synergy put that together. It's over at the Arrowwood Lodge in Baxter, Minnesota. You can go uh, Saturday and Sunday. We're going to talk about this event in a second, but when we walked in, uh, it's a, like I said, it's a lodge, so it looks like a lodge and um there's a fireplace going and it's already like 65 degrees outside and there's a fireplace, probably gas, probably not really emitting heat, but it's like, <laughs> God, turn it off. It uh, almost so. becomes like psychosomatic. You see a fireplace and all of a sudden you're warm. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, or, or if you're really cold and you go up to one of those and it doesn't heat and that makes you just angry. You're like, come oh, on. Severe I, disappointment. Yeah. I mean, I could see it's fire. Why? I'll just go put my hand in it. Um, and so, so I'm not at the lodge. I'm not staying at the lodge. I'm staying at a, a hotel up the road. Uh, but you can see behind me, if you're on uh, ghost box radio with Greg Bakken on Facebook, uh, there are, uh, <laughs> there's a bed behind me. And there are two double beds in this room. I don't know what this hotel thinks I'm going to be doing this weekend, but I think we have our wires crossed. I think it's going to, I think if they're really hoping that I'm bringing in business, if you know what I mean, it's, it's, um, they're going to be highly disappointed. And so will I, but you know, oh, that's just how it goes. The wrong weekend. Oh, <laughs> right? and, it's, and a lot of people dressed up as furry people. I don't know what that means either, but, uh, you know, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay i i honestly have respect for those guys i really do i've been to several edm shows where there are plenty of folks in mascot uniforms or furries there and when you go to an edm show it's all night and you can even like see the humidity from the sweat like hanging in the lights 
and they are in oh, costume absolutely. the entire time. Now, let's be clear. I have respect for everybody. You know, oh, yeah. I'm just. Me too. But and 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 the thing the thing is, it's like uh, you know, and we were, you know, you know, I was going to get to this eventually. Is that uh, over the last few weeks, we've had uh, people commenting on the AM950 Facebook page about our show in the not the nicest way, right? And I saw one today, someone who has thought that it was wacky uh, about uh, us talking about Bigfoot as a trans-dimensional figure, and that he, he, he explained to us in great detail how we are not only Marjorie Taylor Greene, but we're also um, wrong about, about all the, the Bigfoot stuff and just Bigfoot existing in general. So, you know, it's like, come on, you know, if you want to be if you want to be a skeptic about stuff, you are more than welcome to. There's nothing wrong with it. But why? You know, it's like I never understand what what causes people to just be like, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to write a comment and I'm going to crap all over you on it. I never understand that. I honestly think a lot of that comes based on fear. Totally. Oh, 100 percent. I would I would disagree. I would not disagree. Agree. The opposite of disagree is what I would do for you. <laughs> I think dude, it, I think dude is flat out scared that there's <gasps> there's stuff in this universe he's never seen. Oh, no, it wasn't in a book when I read it in high school. So it doesn't exist. Guess what? The universe is giant. There are things out there we will never know about. I mean, we it's aren't even at the tip of the iceberg of what Greg talks about here on ghost box radio night in and night out. I mean, I don't think the universe is that big. No, I'm just kidding. But, uh, <laughs> and plus you were way nicer to that dude than I ever would have been. Kudos yeah. You. you know, it just, it just is whatever, but here's the thing, you know, as we sit on this flat earth, I just feel like that, uh, we have to be, you know, loving of one another. <laughs> What it's not it's not flat. I mean, didn't did the eclipse show us that this week? Wasn't that what totality is? Flat Earth? I mean, I, I just, maybe I misunderstand all of this. I don't know anymore. I don't know. I, I think you did, but you know what what gets me <laughs> about this, it's like if we're a you know flat like a Rand McNally map, why hasn't the sun burnt a hole through us yet? You know, <laughs> like you know, with the ants and the magnifying glass when we were children. <laughs> That could be a whole new uh, version of the eclipse where the, if it does that, it would kind of become a donut. And then the the moon passes through that donut hole as a different kind of eclipse altogether. Donuts. <laughs> I have donuts waiting for me at home, actually. I'll so. uh, see. I, here's the deal. I As I told you before we started, I have not eaten today. And it's been a full day. Uh, we've been, I, I got to the event um, around 5 15, 5 30. We set up, and then uh, there was uh, people tonight uh, coming in, which I, I didn't realize, not because they didn't tell us, it's just that I don't read everything. And um, I, uh, so, you know, we're there and people are coming through. And I mean, for being open for two hours, because they're doing a seance tonight with Witch Jody, who, as you have remembered from such programs as this one. Um, That's right. <laughs> that she uh, that she uh she was doing a seance tonight and then uh there's uh there's just a lot of stuff happening all weekend so it just got a, you know a little busy and then i had to get to the room and i had to set up this state-of-the-art studio that you can hear me so um you and know if you check out greg's facebook page actually he did a really nice job he's got a cool little setup role it's not bad, actually. As you and I were talking, um, is is that you, Matt? When we were when we first got into the biz, so to speak, the the idea of that we could set up like this is like it's it's Star Wars seemed more likely as oh, yeah. a, as something could happen than this. It, it it was a time like in the late ninety mid to late nineties when I first had my first radio job. It almost is like if you press the wrong button, you were going to blow up Alderaan. <laughs> so you you definitely had to be careful and you're you what we were talking about earlier it's going to take trucks we're going to have like satellites linking up in space you know yeah just make a broadcast happen now it's a push of a button it it truly is and and i i just find it i find it like almost a privilege now you know i i i wasn't in radio i went to school for radio we both did um we both went to school for broadcasting and I worked at one station, one t or two TV stations, one radio station, and then from '96 to 2020 uh, or 2017 or 2018, no radio 
whatsoever, apart from internet radio and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, the idea of coming back to this and being able to go on the road sounding reasonably well, I think, I mean, I, I don't know. I sounds all right to me, I guess, but, uh, um, I, it just blows my mind. I love it. I think it's so cool. It's something I never thought would have happened when I first started in small town AM radio, to be honest with you. I didn't think any, I mean, we were still doing records and eight oh, yeah. track cards for our commercials when I first started. Yep. You, you, you set up your record, then you do that quarter turn back. So that gives you a little bit of leeway when you hit it and you got to finish what you're saying or finish your commercial and, or your ID. And it goes right into it seamlessly. One thing I miss most though, about that is being no, able to hit nothing. your post when you're starting a record, you're finishing up the live read or whatever, and you stop talking, you turn your mic off as soon as those vocals begin. Yep. I really miss hitting the post as, as it's called in the quote unquote biz. It's, 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 uh, I've, I've never really had to do that myself. And I, but I mean, that's a, that's an art. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is truly an art to do. It's also an art when, uh, especially back in the day, what people don't maybe realize is that when, when if you're listening to the radio back in the eighties and, uh, they come out of a song or the song is still like either entering or exiting and you have someone, a caller and they're all excited and stuff like that. 99% of the time that's pre-recorded. That was all recorded during the song on audio tape cut up physically and put into something and then played back. And if you could do that in the three and a half to four minutes that a pop song is, yeah. Oh, you are a God. <laughs> Unbelievable. I mean, that stuff is exciting and scary. And the fact is, is that you're doing that like three, four times an hour, at least when you're, when you're a DJ, especially if you're at a, like a place like up here in the twin cities, one of the biggest stations, I mean, obviously KDWB being a pop place, but also WLOL. Oh, yeah. uh, was, uh, you know, Heinz and Berglund, that sort of thing. And, uh, those were, you know, that was huge back in the day. So, yeah, yeah, it's, it's great. It's great. And so now, but now here I am in, in a hotel room is something else I was thinking about too, is, uh, so I'm, you know, you know how hotel rooms are laid out. Basically you have a desk and it's facing a wall mm -hmm. who knows who's next door to me. And I'm talking and I, they're just like probably it's 10, 16. They're trying to sleep. And I'm, you know, we're just talking about like, really, I'm loud. So I'm sure that that is amazing for them. I'm sure they're all, really excited about that. All I got to say just for this broadcast is I'm glad that the room next door that your computer is up against with your microphone isn't using both double beds at the same time. Well, I mean, is that all this hotel has? You know, I, that's, a rel that's a valid question. That is a valid question. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's like, I don't know. I mean, I, I walk in, I'm like, what, what, what am I supposed to do with this? Um, was I not, did I not get the memo or something? But yeah, so I don't know. The question is, did do you, um, so when my wife and I were in Miami about a month or so ago, yeah, the, when the first day we got to one of the, ho one of the hotels we were staying at, <laughs> excuse me, they like, would you like the second floor, eighth floor? We got openings on both. And for the split second, I wanted to be like, does any of those floors have reportedly haunted rooms? <laughs> but I didn't. It was a vacation. It, it was not deal with, but ended up watching paranormal shows to go to bed. That's beside the point. <laughs> so did you get an option? They like, you know, what kind of room do you want? Could you have been like, I want a haunted room? So uh, they they had the room set up for us um, when we got here. And uh, I'll tell you, though, I, I the energy that I'm feeling is very interesting here. Not bad. I don't want to give that off. It's a, but it's just like I feel like like a couple of the lights and you could be like, well, that's just electricity. I mean, I'm sure the guy on Facebook, he's, he's probably listening. He's like, that's, <laughs> that's wacky. It's not Bigfoot. Um, Next electricity is bad. Everyone knows that. <laughs> right. You, it's just a bad light bulb. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it, it, there's, there's, there's a, there's something interesting in here. Uh, too bad. All my equipment is somewhere else up the road, but you know, that's fine too. I could tomorrow, I might uh, do a little something, something and maybe do a spirit box session or something and see what, uh, what's happening around here. I don't know. Well, how many people that are vendors or speakers there are also staying in that hotel? Because that could really mess with the energy. It totally will, because they are a lot of them are here. And um, yeah, a spirit box it. around, it could be really fun. 
<clears throat> and and you know those are the type of things too. If you go to one of these fairs, is that there are there's a lot of energy in the air. It's just how it goes, and uh, it's uh, it's it's really fun actually. And there's a lot of good people there to, uh, uh, this evening that I met and I've known. And uh, I think it's just going to be a, a kind of a, a crazy good energy weekend. And uh, just there's a lot of stuff. Uh, there's um, a gentleman by the name of Barnaby Jones. He's going to be there. He's uh, he talks about uh, uh, Bigfoot. Um, I think I believe there's a uh, a uh, um, a MUFON representative there, uh, some great uh, mediums who are doing some galleries and stuff. So I'm, I'm hoping Terry is going to call in in the second segment. I'm going to send him the number and he can tell us exactly what's going on, because uh, Terry has put together with his team a pretty awesome uh, event. And part of what I thought was really cool too, Adam, was that on my my table there is a QR code um, and you, you get the QR code and they listed all the stuff that I do. Like it's a link tree basically. And they did it for me oh, so awesome. that that was really nice. Yeah. That was really uh, like, I didn't expect that. And I got an email a couple days ago and I guess they do, they do that on a regular basis. And it's like, it's almost kind of a shame to say that out loud because you know, other places are now going to steal it if they haven't already, but it's just a nice little, um, just a nice little uh, way of of uh, making things a little bit easier uh, for everybody. And I think I'm going to run out of cards this weekend. So, yeah, it's pretty exciting. And if by some chance uh, he doesn't join us, what are you doing there and what are the hours? I'm going to be speaking there uh, tomorrow and Sunday. Tomorrow at uh, 1 30 p.m. I'm going to be speaking on Sunday at 10 30 a.m. And then we're just going to be talking about paranormal, uh, you know, exploring the paranormal. I'm going to play some audio. I'm going to, uh, I have a table all weekend. You can come on up. You can say hi. We can talk about paranormal. We can do whatever we want there. And, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's really neat. Um, and just be able to, we've had, I've had people come up to me already and they, one thing that people love to do is they love to tell their paranormal story, which is really great so that you can be like, uh, you know, and sometimes they just want to say it. That's all they want to do. They want to talk about it. Sometimes they might ask my advice or just advice in general. Um, <clears throat> either way though, you know, it's like, that's what I'm there for. I want to be able to talk about it. Got some people who are interested in uh, maybe partnering with us. Uh, we got some people who uh, just were like, oh, wow, I'm going to check it out. So, yeah, this is really a lot of fun. And I'm looking forward uh, to for the rest of the weekend. It's going to be really cool. I don't know if you remember, uh, we had uh, Psychic Medium Diet on. Do you remember? That was before we went nightly. Yeah, that was one of the Sundays I was here. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So she is here this weekend. Oh, nice. Yeah, and uh, so that was nice to see her. I haven't seen her in person in a number of years. So there's a lot of good stuff going on. Oh, man, that's when we, that was even pre-Streamyard. That was OBS, and she had to come in over the phone. Did she? I mean, that could very well yeah. be because we and we didn't really use Streamyard prior to the nightly anyway. No, not um, at all. Yeah, because she was in over the phone. Yeah. Absolutely. So I think what we should do is this. Um, we have question of the week that we want to get to. And once again, folks, this is um, Casual Friday. If there's something you want to talk about, give us a call, 952-946-6205, 952-946-6205. I'm going to see if I can get uh, Terry on as well. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we've got a lot more to get to. You're listening to Ghost Box Radio on AM950. We know you value buying local, especially when it comes to your magical supplies. So if you're looking for grimoires, decks, jewelry, candles, or herbs that are locally sourced, then come on down to Megas Books and Herbs. Curated for your ritual, ceremonial, spiritual, and spell work needs, we've got all the tools to make your working extra. So make that prosperity ritual one that keeps on giving by visiting us at 1848 Central Avenue Northeast in Minneapolis, or visit us online at megasbooks.com. This message is for all of you sitting in the passenger seat, and apologies if it gets a little uncomfortable, but how does it feel to be at the mercy of someone who thinks a random text is more important than your life? Someone who takes their eyes off the road while speeding along in a three-ton hunk of steel. Freaky, right? Well, why not just ask them to stop? Or better yet, volunteer to text for them. It might be a little awkward, but believe me, you'll live. Learn more at StopTextStopRex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Reach your highest level of consciousness and well-being with Metamorphosisconnections.com. 
MetamorphosisConnections.com is an online directory of the best holistic and metaphysical practitioners to help you make your most informed choices. You can search MetamorphosisConnections.com for classes, events, wellness and life coaches, plus metaphysical products and shops. You can also search for a wide array of healers from all modalities, including EFT, sound healing, energy healing, light therapy, ancestral healing, shamanic healing, reflexology, past life regressions, hypnotherapy, yoga, and more. And if you're not sure where to start, the search feature on metamorphosisconnections.com is tailored to help both those who know what they are looking for and those who are just starting. Come explore the possibilities for your higher self by visiting metamorphosisconnections.com. Their experienced practitioners can guide both beginners and those that are already on their spiritual journey. That's metamorphosisconnection.com, your link to direct you on your spiritual transformation. Greg Bakken here. I've told you about the out-of-the-world roast beef sandwiches at Maverick's Real Roast Beef, but I haven't told you about their Philly steak sandwiches, turkey bacon avocado sandwich, BLT, crispy chicken, fish sandwiches, brisket, or pulled pork. Okay, you get the idea. They make a lot of delicious food to the same standard as their famous roast beef sandwiches, and now I'm starving. I'm going to go to Maverick's Real Roast Beef off Lexington and Roseville, and you need to go too. Check out their menu at maverick'sbeef.com. And welcome back to Ghost Box Radio on AM 950. My name is Greg Bach, and thank you very much for joining us on this casual Friday. I am out in Baxter, Minnesota. I am live. Uh, we're going to do an event this weekend. Soul and Synergy is putting on the uh, Psychic Paranormal Wellness Fair. That is uh, tomorrow and Sunday. Uh, they say Brainerd, Minnesota, but it's over at the Arrowwood Lodge in Baxter, Minnesota. You can uh, go and uh, look up uh, Metapara Pro. On Facebook, you have all the information there. Uh, it's you know, if you're in the cities and you want something to do this weekend, nice drive up. It's going to be beautiful out. Drive up, uh, check out the fair. It's only five bucks to get in. Plus, there's uh, opportunities to uh, take part in some galleries. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be speaking Saturday and Sunday. Uh, Saturday at 1:30 p.m. and Sunday at 10:30 a.m. We'll just, you know, Adam, we'll be talking about paranormal. That's kind of how I roll around here. And you also said you're going to be playing clips of some EVPs and other things that you got there as well. Absolutely. You know, we're going to take questions. It's, it's you know, and it's it's not so much of uh, Greg's history and paranormal. It's just more about why do we do what we do and, you know, how we want to be careful, but how we can still have fun doing it. And uh, some of the some of the pitfalls, you know, we're going to play some stuff of like maybe we shouldn't have done this sort of thing and here's the <laughs> result, you know? I mean, because, you know, you still get people who are just like, you know, oh, you know, I love it because I like to be scared. It's like, do you? Do you like to be scared? Do you like to have feeling like that you have oppression because you let something home with you? Okay, if that's what you like, so be it. So, yeah. you, know. you, you You like messing around with this stuff? and Listen to this voicemail. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's probably going to have a playing tomorrow. I mean, you know, you got to. I will say it. that yeah. is still that one gives me so many chills every time you play that one. It's well, it's 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 not great, is it? I mean, it's it's I mean, it's great in the sense of like, wow, I can't believe that, you know, something like that happened. Right. But it's not great if uh, you really think about it and you think, my gosh, the what? <laughs> What was that? Who was that? And so, yeah, that's that's kind of where it's at. Why don't we do this? I want to I want to get to uh, the question of the week here, um, and uh, just uh, talk about. Uh, and I want you all to, if you haven't done so on the Facebook page, if you could possibly um, put it into the comments what you think, or you can call in as well. Uh, but uh, the question of the week this week is: Many of us believe our loved ones who have passed. Uh, left or leave us messages to let us know that they're okay. What outstanding messages, when I say outstanding, like really cool stuff, what messages have pa have a past loved one left for you that has given you comfort, okay? That's what I, that's what I want to talk about tonight because it is uh, truly, uh, it is truly fantastic. Uh, and I, I, I think that there is something really cool 
about uh, people sharing that information. So once again, the question is, many of us believe our loved ones who have passed left or leaves us messages uh, to let us know that they're okay. What outstanding messages have a past loved one left for you that has given you comfort? Uh, we're gonna go to Emily. And uh, Emily, how are you doing tonight? Good, I'm eating this gigantic sloppy joe and I thought I would rub that in a little bit. That's 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 fantastic. That is really, <laughs> really nice. Um, you know, the the good news about uh, the good news about uh, Baxter is that uh, there are still some convenience stores open uh, past eleven. So I mean, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have quite the uh, smorgasbord of uh, amazing food here. Um, so you know, you're you're gonna be the one. Yeah, that's I I, I like a, I'm thinking like a chuck wagon sandwich. You know what those are? Ooh, I do. Yeah, that's that's. Uh, there's a microwave in my room. You know, not only do I wow, have two. That's real fancy. Not only do I have two double beds in here, I have a microwave as well. So, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of good, a lot of good happening here. So, I love to, it. Not to put you on the spot, but it, do you get do you uh, see any sort of like messages from loved ones or anything that? Uh, that you kind of find like comforting or anything. And then, you know, if, if not, just don't bum me out about it. Okay, Emily, I want to, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to turn this into a sad thing. Okay. No, I have actually two great examples of that, but I'm, I called because you mentioned the voicemail. Yeah. Or Adam mentioned the voicemail. Yeah. Um, I got a phone call from a six, six, six number um, yesterday or the day before. No way. And I, yeah, and I answered it and it was a really, really eerie, creepy, robotic voice. It was like almost like a child. It was like, hello? Hello? <laughs> it was so creepy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Are you serious? You got a 666 uh, call, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I could show you sometime. I have it in my phone. It was. It, it was really, really creepy. I, I, I'm not saying I don't believe you. I'm just, I was just, uh, it's just more of a remarking about how those are very rare. I mean, then that's what mine was too. My, mine was nine five two six six six, and then like four other numbers. Uh, yeah, and a, incredible. Have you ever thought about calling that number back? No, not even oh, okay. a little bit, because I answered it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I should. Maybe I should. Because like like I called mine back after I got that voicemail and it was like uh really interesting uh that that there was a disconnected number, it didn't exist. And I called the phone company and they had told me that they don't do six 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 numbers. So that's where I was, you know, mm. confused by all that. So yeah, I don't know. Well now I have to. I think you do. I mean yeah. you know, do it at three in the morning. No, I'm just kidding. But uh... absolutely, the witching hour. <laughs> where, where else? When else could I possibly do it? Well, you know, what is wrong with you, man? <laughs> I, I'll tell you. I've I have been. You know, I, I've been rubbed up by this guy on Facebook about uh, the wackiness he called it of of a transdimensional Bigfoot, and it's just kind of you know gone downhill since then. So I I apologize, Emily. I feel like I'm taking it out on you, but uh, don't call at 3 a.m. All right. No, I wouldn't. I thought it was funny. I wouldn't. I mean, no. I'm so, brave, but not that brave. So you, you said you have uh, two instances of uh, messages. Or was that I one do, of them? I, I do. The first one happened when I was about seven or eight. Um, and I was looking outside my window and this was sort of an out of body type thing. And that was my first kind of experience with that. And I looked up and there were um, three family members. All of them had um, passed mm. and they were just kind of like, they were all in white. They're the typical like angel type situation. Sure. Um, and they were all in white and they were just kind of flying past me. And I just had the, like a very, strong sense of like it's okay you know I had a really rough childhood and so that was really comforting throughout my childhood just knowing like I just knew that they were there wow wow that's that's, that's pretty cool one. that's really cool yeah. yeah 
Yeah. And then the second one actually sort of relates to that, but it happened to my grandmother. But since it relates, um, the one of the people who was flying over me was um, my my aunt, my mom's sister, and she died mm-hmm. at a young age. She had a tumor in her heart, and I think she was twenty one. My grandmother, uh, actually, my great grandmother was uh, lived in St. Paul her whole life and was walking home from work. This would have been late eighties, and um, she was walking home from work and she felt a, a tap on her shoulder and she turned around and it was my aunt and she, she turned around and my aunt just standing there and she said, I'm home. And oh. she lived in Arizona at the time. My aunt did. And so, and then she was gone. She just disappeared. And my grandmother was like, you know, this is not real. You know? Yeah. I had a long day. It's not happening, but she gets home and about an hour later, they got the phone call that my aunt had passed in the hospital. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. How cool. Yeah. Uh, Do you want, do you want to, do you want to hear one of mine? I do. It's, it's, it's it's very simple. It's very simple. Uh, I just remember when my grandmother died, when I was four years old, it would be my mom's mom um, that, uh, you know, we, she she died. I mean, there's a whole thing around that too. But uh, she passed, and uh, we went to the funeral. She was um, she was uh, buried, all that stuff. And then one day, not far long after her being buried, she I, I I'm sitting in the living room. You know, I'm four years old again, and uh, this with mom's in there, and there's just this huge waft of roses just really strong it came in and it left and uh i said to my mom i said what was that and mom didn't skip a beat she said that's grandma so years later and i mean like 20 and well i think dad was still alive so like 2014 or something like that i just said to mom i said you know i never talked about it again i said did i dream this and I, I told her a story. She goes, no, I remember it very well. And she's also talked about how, like, she would walk downstairs and she'd see her mom, my grandma, lying on the couch um, because oh. because that's where she would be when she would stay at our house. She would she'd be sleeping on the couch downstairs, you know, really first class uh, accommodations for her. Uh, <laughs> you know, you think about that now. It's like what there isn't a couch upstairs anyway. So. Um, because I mean basement. Uh, so right. it was like, wow, that's very incredible. But what she also told me that I have no memory about whatsoever. She said that I, meaning me, had a conversation with grandma when gra- it was an open casket. And I was up at the casket having a conversation with her. Oh. And I don't know what it was. Um, so interesting, huh? Oh, that is interesting. And also... To be fair, it wasn't a couch. It was a Davenport. It's true. It was a Davenport. Um, you know, but it was, it was, it, you know, it was years before that they renovated that place, by the way. So, I mean, it was just like, if this is where you're going to stay, you know, God. Oh, yeah. well. oh, that's so sweet. That's a great story. I hear that when the like, common sense that people smell when they know a loved one is around is roses. Yeah. Well, absolutely. I hear that a lot. And and the, the funny thing is, it's not funny. It's not a ha ha funny, but, uh, when, uh, when my dad passed, uh, I was, uh, I went to, uh, I, I went over right away to my mom's house. You know, it was like one in the morning I got the call, um, and, uh, got the call that he had passed, I get in, I'm driving from uh, St. Michael over to St. Anthony Village in, in uh, right outside of Twin Cities or outside of Minneapolis, and we get there at 2 in the morning. First of all, the thing I still laugh to myself about literally is thinking on the way over there that maybe they revived him by the time I get there. Maybe they're – because it's like my brain's like there has to be a mistake here. There has to be something – just not right there. Um, and I get there to find out that he actually passed like 10 PM and it was like 2 AM. So, um, there's that. But as soon as I left there, I went downtown Minneapolis to get my laptop from where I worked and, uh, I get out of the car and there's a scent, this strong scent to this day. I identify immediately with my father just at that moment. That's dad. And it's he, that scent stuck with me. It was all around 
for about a week and a half up until uh, the funeral. After the funeral, it disappeared, but it still comes through on occasion, especially in my house. He visits. Does it happen when you're like in times of stress or just randomly? I think a little bit of both, um, you know, but okay. some sometimes, you know, and not that he's like the harbinger of, you know, of like, you know, death or anything. But sometimes when I do send that, get that sent, I'm like, OK, what's going on? You know, like, is there something that I yeah. should know about, you know? So Yeah, because I sometimes I've just heard that people will um, smell a loved one in times of stress, like the loved ones coming back to say, it's OK, I'm here, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, and it, it was, it was, it was uh, very much uh, something that I needed at the time and being, you know, my background in the paranormal and stuff, it was, uh, you know, it doesn't, it didn't freak me out. It's just sad that he's gone. It's, it's hugely sad. Uh, but, you know, someone like my sister who has now opened up a lot more to that sort of uh, world at that time, she was very uh, unsure of it. It wasn't, she wasn't a skeptic. She just was, uh, not ready for it. And uh, so really? I, I think he knew not to really give her any of those, uh, any of those, uh, uh, those uh, moments. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's no, pretty it cool. Would scare her. It would scare her. It absolutely. It would scare her. Now I think, I think to a certain degree it might still, I mean, but I mean, she, she has really grown quite a bit in that area. And uh, so she is very much, I think, you know, because I think she really wants mom to come through for her. And that's for some reason, I, I really haven't got a whole lot of a lot of that either of, of mom. But I don't look at that as anything other than that when the time comes, the time comes. And I think that's something, too, that I think a lot of people need to understand when they are doing like when they're waiting for the loved ones. And they, I, I so many times I get people who are frustrated that their loved one hasn't yeah. come through. It's just like, just wait. And they may be, and you have no idea because it's happening when you're sleeping, you know, so that subconscious happening as well. All right. Well, I think sometimes people don't want to come back. And there's that there too. Sometimes when, when they don't want to. No. And I think, I think the thing with mom is that she is somebody who likes to give people their space. Uh, so, okay. uh, all right, Emily, I really appreciate the call. That was great. I really appreciate you sharing all that information with us too. Yeah, thanks, Greg. Thanks, Adam. And you enjoy your sloppy Joe also, okay? I will. Yeah, I'm glad someone thank gets you. some food around here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for just calling to tell me that you're eating. All right, thank you. At least uh, she wasn't eating melted ice cream. Well, and at least she wasn't eating on the on the phone either. You know, it's not like... Get the whole fight <laughs> club, Brad. Get, nom, nom, you called? Nom, nom. There's nothing worse than you're on the phone with someone and you're like... <laughs> no, the worst is when you're on the phone with somebody and all of a sudden you hear a toilet flush. <laughs> well, I don't think I've had that. That is my biggest but that... <laughs> uh, Why don't we go ahead and do this? Let's take our next break. When we come back, I know, Adam, that you had an answer uh, to the question of the week. I'd love to uh, talk with you about what you have experienced because uh, these are very important moments and uh, these are uh, very much worth uh, hearing about. If you have anything you want to add, uh, put it into the comments. Or you can call in 952-946-6205. You're listening to Ghost Box Radio on AM950. If you own a holistic or metaphysical business and are looking to expand, then you need to be listed on metamorphosisconnections.com. It's a network where you can grow with like-minded practitioners and reach new clients. Metamorphosisconnections.com is an online directory you need to list yourself and your business. Our platform makes it easy for you to create listings of your products and services, and you can also choose to list your classes, events, and so much more. MetamorphosisConnections.com helps you create weekly and monthly promotional ads targeted towards your potential clients and promotes them for you via social media and newsletter. There are clients searching for your specialty right now. Let us help them find you. Start your listing today so you can share your own unique gifts and talents by finding the level of membership that best fits your needs. Let us help you reach your clients that are searching for what you do. Visit metamorphosisconnections.com and sign up today. The Tilted Tiki, located in downtown Stillwater, helps you get your tropical tiki vibe on with a large selection of fantastic-tasting tiki cocktails, served in unique and fun glasses, 
a menu of delicious food ranging from small bites, craft tacos, sandwiches, and more. Plus, don't forget they have live music Wednesday through Saturday nights. Located in downtown Stillwater, the Tilted Tiki is your tropical relaxation restaurant in Minnesota. Visit thetiltedtiki.com. Why must the world be so cold? They've gone against what was told. Thinking rape is cool? Think about it. They think it's not wrong. Violence against women? The rape, the abuse, the emotional, physical? They all hold the hate. Think about it. Is it right or wrong? What attracts you? I'm not saying no names, but you laugh. Talk about it like nothing is wrong. Think about it. They all hold the hate. Gotta stop the violence. Stop the hate. Think about it. Sponsored by the Minnesota Indian Women's Sexual Assault Coalition. Greg Bakken here. Like you, I love good, fresh, delicious food. So I want to tell you about this treasure in Roseville called Maverick's Real Roast Beef. Maverick's has the best roast beef sandwiches I've ever had. Made fresh every order. Add fries or onion rings dropped in the fryer when ordered, and you have a winning combination. Maverick's Real Roast Beef has a lot more than roast beef, so check out their website, maverick'sbeef.com, or check out their restaurant on Lexington in Roseville. And join me Monday on Ghost Box Radio with Greg Bach, and we're going to be reaching out to psychic medium Michelle Lemke Budke. We're talking about uh, her situation uh, doing the work that she does where uh, demonic possession suddenly comes in. We're going to be talking about her story. And also, it's worth noting, too, that uh, you, you all may remember author Anna Maria, Anna Maria Manalo. Uh, she wrote The Night Visitors uh, with Tom Conwell. She is writing a book with Michelle right now. So we're going to have Michelle on on Monday, but then we're going to probably have them both on in May as well to talk about the book and talk about uh, the situation. Uh, so I, it's going to be, you know, Adam, it's it's going to be one of those keep the lights on sort of uh, thing. I Every think. time. Yeah. And Marie. Oh, my God. <laughs> Her books <laughs> scare the bejesus out of me. Yeah, it's uh, it's, it's true it's, stories. Is- they are true stories. I mean, and that's just it. And it's, it's, it, how, how can we say it? It's frightening. So it is, but it needs to be told too. And these are very powerful books that she's written. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to have her on again and again, because there's a lot more to be talking about as well. So uh, first of all, uh, it's a little bit of uh, house cleaning here uh, that uh, Emily had sent me a text with that, uh, 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 the phone number that she got yesterday uh, uh, so that I can definitely see that it is the, the I mean, not that I, I did not, you know, not believe her, but she still sent it over. And it's it's just like, yeah, OK, uh, that. Oh, and breaking news, breaking news, Adam. She just recalled the number. Oh, wow. Oh, because to me, it looks like she put she just recalled the numb B. She did. She did. Oh. And then she she replaced it with number. Oh, I mean, maybe that. maybe the possessions already began because she called back. I'm not quite sure. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's uh, uh, braver it, than me. It's 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 really uh, very, very crazy, actually. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, yeah, that's uh got to find out how that went. But before we go any further, um, you know, I wanted to make sure because, you know, every time I do a, a question of the week, um, I, uh, I, you know, you always are answering. And I want to make sure that we get your answer in there uh, about uh, and I'm going to read it again for those uh, who are curious to know what the question of the week is. Um, and the, the, that question is many of us believe our loved ones who have passed left or leaves us messages to let us know that they are okay. What outstanding messages have a past loved one left for you that has given you comfort? Well, I, with mine, it was not last summer, but the summer before. Yeah. And the place where I work, I called it a warehouse in the post. It's more of, we call it a warehouse there, but it's not like a huge warehouse. Like most people think of it's a smaller office room that, keeps everything and that's where i'm stationed Mm -hmm. um but the back door i always like to keep open during the summer and we had started finally dealing with my daughter's health issues as they had become very present and really messing with her sure and we had been dealing with it for a few months and i was finally i i had had enough and i was having a mental breakdown at work 
door was open, but the entire day had been cloudy, kind of mm -hmm. off and on Ray. And just as I'm kind of reaching that peak mental breakdown where waterworks are about to start flow and I'm about to start yelling at the top of my lungs, the sun broke through and I could hear what sounded like my mother who had passed away in 2017 walking through the back door. Now, the reason I say I think I hear my mother is when she passed, she had lupus and horrible rheumatoid arthritis and had to walk with a cane. And the kind of shoes that she'd wear, she'd always wear like the flat bottom but harder soled shoes for support. So when she would walk on linoleum or at different surfaces, it would have a distinct sound. Mm -hmm. And the floor of the warehouse is linoleum. And through that door, I swear to you, as the day is long, I could hear the cadence of her limping through and then the sound of the cane. And I had never felt so calm and probably so loved in my life. That's amazing. That's beautiful. That really is. It was just a, an unbelievable moment. And just when you needed to the most. Oh, yeah, because I had yet. It had been, let's see, she died in 2017. This was 22. So it had been four and a half years at that point because it was December of 2017 when she passed i hadn't had a dream no phantom smell no yeah. nothing and never really gave too much thought of it other than eh, she's enjoying herself she finally got to meet dennis wilson you know that was kind of <laughs> kind of my thing she was a huge sure fan. okay and you know but then yeah but it, that was the most time of need i have had since she had passed and she was there wow that's beautiful that is so cool it, you know, and it's that's what mothers do, isn't it? Really? Yeah, they'll they show up when you need them. And and I I am well aware that there are probably people listening. Their moms weren't there. I get that, but I mean the <laughs> idea of like the loved ones when you when you really need it, there is something there. Maybe we don't always see it, but I do believe that there is something there. And I, you know, it's it's tough. It's tough when. You know, like like this gentleman who went crazy on the Bigfoot thing. You know, it's like I I understand that some things are not easy to believe. I understand that. And sometimes we believe too much. Like we we believe very easily. But I feel bad for people who and I don't not in a look down sort of way. I just wish that they could understand what's the harm in thinking that there's more out there than what we're seeing in a scientific new, you know, like scientific write-up or something like that, that, you know, it, it always comes to my mind a little bit of faith. And I don't mean religion. I mean, faith. They're two different things. And I've talked about this before. And uh, just because, just because you can't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. 100%. 100%, and right. and I just I just I, I feel I feel bad because I think they're missing out, you know. I mean, I mean, I and not to put you on the spot, Adam, but I would think that the work that you do in paranormal, whether you're just ex, you know just learning about it or that you've taken part in it, I mean, what an what an exciting part of of our lives to be able to have these moments of communication. Yeah. It, so my first paranormal investigation was with you at the grand house mm -hmm. first room that i'm in i we caught an evp i still go back and listen to that yeah you know it's still on my recorder i've on a notepad in my phone i've got the timestamp, and there are times when you know it, it's a random woman's voice saying like hello and i don't know who this person is she never identified herself or anything like that but there are times i will go back and listen to it for two reasons. One, just to kind of jazz myself up again. Yeah. Like, yeah, there is more out there. And two, me being the somewhat scientific nerd that I am, still trying to replay those events, the three of us that were in that room, what else it could have been. And this was past September, and I still can't debunk the EVPs that were caught. Absolutely. And I mean, that goes back when you say that you go back and re-listen to that stuff. I mean, and because you brought it up, I'm going to play it. Uh, well, my my thing, at least. And that was from my very first investigation where using the spirit box and uh, it was the first night and we were getting loads of uh, loads of uh, responses. And uh, we're upstairs, my friend Jeff and I, and I and I'm having a spirit box going. I said, my name is Greg. This is Jeff. Could you say, Greg, could you say Jeff? 
And this is what we got. Great. Check. Great. Check. It sounds better uh, when I don't think I have this internet, but I mean, it's there. Greg, Jeff, here we go again. Great. Check. Here we go. That's better. Oh, yeah. and definitely with the cans on, I, you can hear it clearly. Yeah, it's it's beautiful. It's it's really beautiful, and uh, I think that that is something that uh, you know, my my life would be really not great if I didn't have this in my life. And I think the thing that people like that gentleman on Facebook they don't seem to understand is it's not for a lot of us. This isn't a um, a hobby. This isn't like something we just do because we do it. It's actually our belief system. Mm -hmm. It's it's spiritualism. It's it's the idea that we are all energy and we're you know connecting. Uh, not that everyone has to do it that way. Not at all. But you know when you're going and going after people about that stuff, it's like you got to understand. You know you don't want you don't want people to persecute you over your beliefs. You don't realize that you're kind of doing that when you are mocking stuff like that. And maybe they don't care. Maybe they don't care. And that's 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 just something else completely different. Well, like I said, it'd be all fair. You know, I'm a jerk. I went and looked at that guy's profile. So if I were going to go and bash that dude's belief system, I'd have let him know how much of a failure Bitcoin was as much as a tech nerd <laughs> that guy was. I'd be like, I'll talk about your Bitcoin then. Yeah, new currency, huh? <laughs> Uh, but like and, I said, you are you are a much bigger man than I am when it comes to something hey. like that. Well, and you know, it just it just I, I you know it's it's like because it's like we all know where these go when we have these disagreements. We all know how it goes down the rabbit hole. But it's just like you know, I'm still gonna put my point out there. You know, I'm still gonna say what's on my mind about it. And you know, I knew you know the bigger man would have not have even like responded at all because oh, yeah. it's like it's like uh because you know you're i'm not going to say something i'm not going to write something and this person's going to be like you know what you're right i've i've seen the light now no pun intended and i'm <laughs> i'm going to you know i i i, I now believe not only in bigfoot but he's transdimensional you know <laughs> it's just like it doesn't work that way you know but it's still like you still need to i felt like it still needed to be addressed that you're just not going to be able to get away without some kind of comment you know, you that's know really and it, if I was an even bigger jerk, I would pay for the dude to go with you and, and Ernie and, and everybody down to Fort Duffield and go squatching so that he could be and just show tell me there isn't something else. You may not see Bigfoot, but tell me there isn't something else within the energy of the land, of the trees, of the people around you that's causing more than meets the eye. Oh, absolutely. I think you're I think you're dead on there with the idea that uh, you have to there. there's a balance, isn't there? there I is. mean, there truly is a balance and that you you if you don't get it, that's fine. But don't rip on us because that's what we base our lives on. Exactly. But, you know, that's how the world goes. Like you said, we know that uh, we know that uh, when you start getting people nitpicking at us that means that we're getting through you yeah, know that, that that people are and it, like you said i think it is fear-based i think it is something more along the line of uh of uh kind of like yeah yeah i i this this is this is you know you're 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 doing something on my radio station i haven't seen before and i don't agree with it and, and therefore i must not like it and uh that's just kind of how how that that is i guess and in my mind, Abe Simpson just floated in my mind. <laughs> right? I'm old and not new. I used to be with it. Now I don't know what with it is, and that scares me. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 really something. It really is something. But you know what? That's fine. And uh, you know what what he doesn't understand is that there's a lot of people who listen to this show. A lot of people who doesn't mean that they listen that they all agree with me either, or what you and I are saying doesn't mean that at all. They, you know, it's it's the show is a la carte. You're going to take what you want out of it. You're going to, you know, you might, people might just ignore Fridays because it's like, well, you guys really aren't talking paranormal. You're talking about whatever you want. Right. Others might tune in just because of Friday. You just don't know. Yeah. Some folks might just tune in for paranormal or demons or Bigfoot or aliens or Loch Ness monster. We don't talk about Nessie, but you know what I mean? 
Yeah, no, absolutely. So, yeah, there, there's a lot. Uh, and that's, and you think that alone is enough reason why this is so fascinating. All this is so because, you know, when you're talking in this realm, you can talk about literally anything, oh, yeah. literally anything. And it's because all of this, yes, it exists, but it's also still theory. Yeah, it's your theory. It's my theory. It's Emily's theory. It's Danny's theory. It's Kyle's theory. It's our listeners theories, which I, I love the fact our listeners now seem to have conversations going on with themselves as well in the chat. This is beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. And no, but I, it's bringing all these energies together. It 100 percent. And you're right. It's it's that's the thing is like you 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 take out of it what you want. And uh, at the end of the day, what what more is there? that we could we could possibly ask for once again folks i'm in baxter i'm going to be here for uh the wellness fair in at the arrowwood lodge with uh tomorrow and sunday i'm speaking tomorrow at 1 30 and then sunday at 10 30 a.m and now as we wrap up the week don't forget on monday we're going to have on psychic medium michelle lemke bootke talking about her experiences with demonic possession but please make sure to visit Ghost Box Radio to find past episodes of our radio show and like us over on Facebook at Ghost Box Radio with Greg Bakken. Also send any comments or feedback to comment at ghostboxradio.com. Don't forget to check out the best of Ghost Box Radio airing Saturdays at 8 p.m. and Sundays at 4 p.m. on AM 950. And then finally, whether you're chasing spirits or just drinking them tonight, please be careful out there. We're going to see you Monday as we talk demonic possession with psychic medium Michelle Lemke uh, Budke. Everyone, have a great weekend. Hope to see you out here at Baxter. Take care, everyone. Good night. Hi, it's Matt McNeil. Listen to The Matt McNeil Show from 3 until 5 weekday afternoons right here on the Progressive Voice of Minnesota.